Oh my pretty dirty watch. Hello everyone. Well, here we are in chalon sur Sound. Uh, we've been here for a little while now and it looks like we'll be here for quite a little while longer as we wait out this lockdown. We are feeling quite lucky to be here because of all the places we could have been stuck. This is a very, very good one. Uh, we've got very good access to grocery stores and everything else, which is not always the case along the rivers. And we're spending our time trying to do the things that we know best. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of video editing and playing some music. And Aladino, of course, has been dedicating himself to boat improvement projects. And so this video is going to be less of a story, perhaps, than most of our usual episodes, and is a bit more for the practically minded amongst you, which I know there are many, uh, because I know many of you are boat owners yourself. So one thing that Aladino does very well, and often impresses me when he does, is inspecting the boat to find out what needs to be done. And he'll find the tiniest, tiniest little cracks, which to me look like nothing, but which could become much more serious problems if not addressed right away. So since we're going to be at this dock for a while, I think this episode and the next few episodes are going to be more those behind the scenes boat projects that boat owners always seem to find themselves getting stuck into. And of course my job will be more of the behind the scenes video editing to bring all these practical tales of boat workmanship to the screen in front of you. All right, without further ado, let's hand this episode over to Aladino and Magic Carpet. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all doing well. It's uh, definitely spring here, beautiful weather. And I thought, what better thing to do than um, take you along for my spring work. So I want to start with inspection. Not that fiberglass is completely maintenance free, but I want to start with the wood. What are some problem areas, uh, how to find them, how to look for them, and then how to address the problem. So obviously it all starts with vacuuming or cleaning. No, well, that's just a side passion of mine anyway. <laughs> No, um, but honestly, that's, that's how you best find things. For example, behind you, the spray hood is installed right now, so I will take that off um, and many things become visible underneath it. Uh, you cannot find those damages if you just have everything installed. Uh, another thing is we have the life raft installed on our wooden turtle hatch, so haven't seen it in two years. Uh, who knows if there is a, a big hole underneath. As I do that, I take notes. Um, if you think that you address the problem right away, you can also leave stickers on the areas, um, but that's like more specific, like if I'm varnishing here, like, a, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, because sometimes things uh, are less visible once you've sanded them. Yeah, by the way, the cockpit combing is matte right now. That is because um, I have sanded it, but I haven't gotten to varnishing it yet. So that will be another thing for later. But yeah, let's go have a look. So there's three main places that Aladino keeps his eye out for during these inspections. The first is anywhere where wood meets wood. The second is anywhere where metal meets wood. And the third is anywhere that has some kind of force put on it, either by a winch or by a cleat or something like that. Okay, I've already noticed two things. Um, little things, but that's what we're looking out for. Yeah, well, don't think I'm crazy, I'm just pointing out everything here. Um, there's a Sika Flex seam here, and that is because I really do not want water in here, because, uh, yeah, that can go in the deck, that can go inside, that can ruin the cockpit. And I remember that I didn't have primer when I applied this seam. So now I do and I'll do it again. I, I was careful enough when I varnished, so I made sure that um, varnish seeps in there mm -hmm. and um, it's sealed. Like I don't see the problem here, but I still prefer if there is a seam like this one here. Okay. Just uh, for 
peace of mind. One other thing I've already noticed is the attachment of the spray hood is this little metal fitting. And um, well, I actually don't like how it's made because if I turn it around, you can see as it's pressed when it's screwed into the wood, there is like a really sharp edge all around it. Mm -hmm. And this one actually can damage your varnish and the wood. So this is what happened here. And uh, after damaging the varnish, um, it's also a little bit of a spiral because when you're in a salty environment, once salt water is in it, then salt will continue to always suck water into it and make it humid. So this is something we will address. I take it off. Um, uh, wash it out, wash uh, the salts out, and then make it dry, and then we will seal it again. Uh, but yeah, don't seal right away. There's a little crack in the teak here. Um, yeah, this uh, preferably would be fixed by making it bigger with a router, and then putting in a little um, strip of teak uh, glued in place. But I don't have a router, so I'll just uh, fill in some epoxy make sure it's sealed. Same problem here, it's because I don't want to have water in this void that I cannot see because this is the connection of cabin top and cockpit combing but actually this triangle right here it's hollow mm. so um, I'm gonna make sure this is this is closed and I mean also it's protected by the by the spray head. All right let's continue. Oh my pretty turtle watch. You got it? Yeah. Let's set this onto our dock. Our dock. By now there's already so much stuff on it. I can declare it ours. <laughs> Is that how that works? Yep. So basically um, the problem with these hatches is um, well I mean yeah again it's also the beauty of it but there is no plywood and what isn't plywood, what is um, solid timber, uh, can flex still. Um, the bigger the piece, the more flex it can have, depending on uh, humidity, how it changes. So wherever two pieces meet, um, there might be a crack. And this is what happened right here. If you build one, uh, from scratch and you use epoxy, uh, this is uh, reduced quite a bit nowadays. Uh, this was glued together 40 years ago, so unless you do it again, as I said, from scratch, uh, you might have to come back and look at it once in a while and then uh, glue a seam back together, so to speak. It's a place that I already had to varnish a few times. Um, well, epoxy first and then varnish. So when I've installed the life raft cradle, I uh, put a little pieces of teak underneath. Um, but I can see that the life raft is quite heavy, so here in the middle it still pushed the stainless down to actually touching the wood. So if I take it off I can have a proper look. Because, uh, yeah, if it did scratch the var varnish, of course, uh, it's a place where water can get in and then rot can become a more extensive problem. Um, there's a scratch here that uh, was just varnished and actually um, that introduces another topic quite nicely. So if you look at different windows the color of the wood varies a lot and that is not only because different woods are used uh, then it makes sense that the color is different but there is the difference also of being dyed wood or not. This nicely reddish color is if you do dye the wood. So one problem of um, when you're living on the boat and using it, you get scratches, you get dents, and if those are all the way down to the wood and you don't dye again, then it becomes uh, visible. Um, a little patchwork. So how I go about this is uh, just accepting that after it comes out of the boatyard, it looks uh, perfect for a while and then as you have to go and fix certain uh, certain areas, it will start to look a little patchy. Uh, have to be a little patient and then you know at one point you start again from scratch. You bring everything down to bare wood, you give it... Um, the you apply the stain evenly again and re-varnish and then you have a nice looking boat again for a while. 
I can see how for many this would be too much work and that is a perfectly valid reason and uh, maybe you wouldn't get a wooden boat then. But for those who love wooden boats this is just part of it and it can also translate into the joy and pride of uh, having done just that and bringing out the beauty of it. So there is two main reasons for problems to occur. Um, as I mentioned, the first one is where wood meets and is glued together. Once you notice one of those cracks, the best thing to do is uh, to stop water from getting in, so you just put some varnish on it, but of course it doesn't look uh, like when it get, comes out of the boatyard. And the other problem zone is where metal meets wood, so basically where anything is screwed in. Um, I mean, it's a very logical one, but this is uh, something I'll do here. The window frames are all screwed into place, so part of my inspection is taking all the window frames off. So I'll get to that now. What I look for now is obviously um, just by the screw holes if there was any water getting in there and what are you looking for specifically there like discoloration or? yeah uh, mostly if the varnish was even at first once water comes in the varnish uh, separates a little bit lifts, from the lifts off yeah. from the wood that's because the wood when wet swells up and then uh, it starts discoloring also like there is one tiny spot here but this uh, was two years ago this has been addressed and it's uh, dried and sealed now but you can mm -hmm. see how it was starting underneath yeah. and that was the window frame pressing on it mm -hmm. that's why i've um, applied this foam now yeah. which uh, prevents that a little bit mm -hmm. this one looks good Awesome. And then on to the other ones. The only thing that um, I can tell from here is, well, as you can see, there's these bigger damages, the cracks. Uh, this was from when the boat fell down from the crane. And these ones by the window, they're pretty typical for uh, wooden cabin tops. Uh, the wood works and uh, moves and sometimes this could also be provoked by uh, putting in a screw and not drilling accordingly first so you might stress and then the wood cracks uh, so it's a place where it happens fairly frequent and what I can see here is uh, I have epoxied the crack and then I've varnished over it but I've only done this from outside and not from inside and I can see tiny little hair cracks sideways. And that means that it's still moving a little bit, so the epoxy has not um, stabilized it entirely. So the best would be uh, to also uh, do something from inside. I have also discovered two things here in the cockpit. One was uh, after close inspection of the tiller. I've taken it off now because um, there is a crack here underneath where the, the, the different the wood is laminated together, uh, separating a little bit. We're sailing too much, or too hard uh, on top as well. And also it has become matte. Uh, that is because of the sunshine. So that is actually pretty harsh. So. Or I bring it back to bare wood and start, or uh, I just re-varnish. Here on the cockpit combing is another problem I want to point out, and that being our autopilot mount. So it's this little um, bronze tube that holds the autopilot in place. So it's something that has a lot of force on it. Uh, obviously it has to hold the autopilot in place as the auto autopilot then moves the tiller, but that place, that attachment should stay solid. So 
I, I saw a crack and uh, first I just thought that it's on the varnish but as you look closer it's actually the wood starting to split and um, I had this in the back of my mind that's why I also went back to look at it because uh, I wasn't sure would it be strong enough or not how I installed it and uh, Luckily, I've seen now just in time that it isn't strong enough. So it's basically this little discoloration. You see it by the discoloration. Um, that mostly means that the varnish cracked uh, or that it's, yeah, like drier. And then um, first I thought it's just a scratch in the varnish from one side. But then by looking at it from the other side, I can actually see that there is the same crack. So we are actually lucky that it didn't uh, rip a whole piece of uh, the cockpit combing out. So my plan on what I will do here is I have these little um, pieces of uh, Brunsel's plywood and I will put, once I get the right shape, I will glue this on as a reinforcement and I'll do this from either side. And I think this is interesting because this video is about how to inspect your boat to get ahead of any damage. Um, and so this is an interesting place because it's a very, very small visible sign. And if you weren't really looking for it, you would barely even see it, I think. Mm -hmm. But because we know, or because you know, that that spot is under load because yeah. of the autopilot, then you went specially to that spot. And I think that's an impor important point to make is like, you always look first at the areas that you know are under load that have some kind of tension put on Yeah, them. totally. Um, I mean, uh, the same applies, for example, here um, on our winch base. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the winch base is attached on the cockpit combing. Um, there is the bungs here hiding the screws. And also there is a stainless steel bracket, which is most important. But there is incredible force on the, on the sheets here pulling this whole piece out so you can expect um, a crack where the base meets the cockpit combing you actually see this from the other side but you can expect a crack there and that is unavoidable unless you would varnish both pieces before installation so they are protected from um, water and then you would glue it on let's say um, not with a with a with a hardening glue uh, like epoxy, but more like uh, something like Sikaflex, which would uh, maintain elasticity, but still um, glue it very very well. And then the screws, of course, but that would act a little bit like a shock absorber, as the forces apply on it, and the move and the two different parts of wood move differently, you obviously get a crack. So this one is not a structural issue though, because uh, the crack is in the varnish and not in the wood. And also water cannot really get to it because this is sloped and it has a teak uh, protection on it. So there is no water actually getting in there. You can put a seam in there, um, but then it just makes it not visible. It's not like you're adding any structural integrity to it. So I actually leave it like that and I can inspect it once in a while. So I've gone around the boat and I've completed my list of uh, close inspection and now I will have to figure out what I'm going to tackle and how I have to prioritize things. My first priority obviously is what could evolve into a bigger problem. So I'm going to tackle that, but other things which are minor, which maybe are unpleasant to the eye, uh, let's say the discoloration on the turtle hatch really isn't pretty but it's sealed by varnish nonetheless and it's covered by the life raft so it's not getting any worse. Uh, I will tackle the varnish in the cockpit since it's already sanded of course. During the inspection I also saw that the teak deck could need some more maintenance but it is um, it involves many steps and also the cockpit would need some work, but we will include that in a separate episode which will be all about teak deck and cockpit maintenance. So about the attachment of the autopilot, I have come to the conclusion that I will make those two plywood cheeks and uh, attach them on the cockpit combing from inside and outside. I will do that, certainly. Um, the crack on the cabin top around the window frames, 
those are sealed for the moment so I will not do anything there especially because I'm hoping to get a router in the future and I want to do that properly once and forever and therefore a router is required so I'm leaving that and since I'm also not revarnishing the whole cabin top at the moment I leave those things for later and for now I just tend to the scratches and cracks and dents and all of that uh, so that they're sealed but the whole cabin top will get that treatment further on down the road. So I have re-bedded all the window frames. I have uh, not seen any uh, potential problems there. That was all good. But for added peace of mind, I am adding a little bit of uh, butyl tape just around the screws right now before I put the frames back in. And I would still say that for me personally, um, I'd recommend uh, checking once a year that is a better practice right now I just really like this butyl tape so I can uh, take it off and have a look uh, without having to go at it with a chisel and also there were a couple of other things in the back of my mind for example we have quite a bit of play on the tiller so I will try to solve that also one thing that I wanted to get to uh, for a while is taking the windlass apart it's uh, corroded quite a bit and when I installed it I just glued it down but I would like uh, to take it apart and actually uh, replace a few parts if I can get them. I'm quite happy I did this inspection and I have my list now and right now I will focus on the things that could lead to future problems. And in future episodes we're going to dive into the details of how I'm addressing these problems. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe! And feel free to ask any questions in the comment section down below. See you next time.